We've got a little bit of information on how to check a wheel speed sensor. Of course, most of our wheel speed sensors are integral with our wheel bearing assemblies anymore on that. This wheel bearing assembly here off of a 05 Sierra a dealer wanted $361 for one bearing. Aftermarket, you can get it for about 180 or so on, and it is a Timken bearing at that time. But with that, we could also buy the wheel speed sensor separate from the wheel bearing assembly. Where's the problem happening on these? It has to do with the mating surfaces between the wheel speed sensor and the mounting surface of it. Let's take a look at one over here and I'll show you what happens to them generally on this style of vehicle where the wheel speed sensor sets on this flange right around here this item actually starts to corrode and it lifts the wheel speed sensor up off of its base and then there's too much of an air gap in between there two components really is all there is to this one is going to be a tone wheel and inside the hole on the left hand side right there is a tone wheel and I'm going to spin this guy so you can see literally see the bumps go around inside of that as our wheel goes around. With that, that will generate an AC signal through a typical pickup coil, magnetic pickup coil uh, unit. Now, again, the height or the distance between this flange and the uh, tone wheel down inside does make a difference on its voltage output. So if you got a loose bearing that will waver, allow this to waver up and down the ring inside or if you have corrosion on the top that lifts the wheel speed sensor up off of there. So you could go ahead and clean this guy, put an $80 wheel speed sensor on it, then you've got a uh, wheel bearing problem not long from now and so on there. So you have to take that in consideration. So how could we possibly and properly test a wheel speed sensor? Let's look at all the components involved besides it being bolted on there. Let me get this one out of the way. Wheel speed sensor consists of two wires. And we're going to go back to some magnetic induction theories. And of course on this you can see I have a coil of wire and of course every wire has two ends to it so I physically just adapt it onto this unit there then. Well then what I'll do is we'll get an AC or do two tests. One will be a resistance test and that's easy enough to do on any type of coil as in that. We've seen that before on our ignition coils. The same applies on this. That tells us if we have a broken wire anywhere or a corrosion or so on there. We're seeing eight tenths of an ohm on that unit there then. Now, I can also prove what's going on with our wheel speed sensor. And in this case, it is of an AC voltage. Most of the earlier ones were all AC voltage, but they are starting to install an analog to digital converter in the wheel speed sensor itself. That way they don't have to have it in the computer. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna uh, range this because I'm on millivolts on this guy. So I'll get me a couple decimal points over to the left right there. Min, max, peak. And at this time then all I'm going to do is take a magnet out of my toolbox and run this magnet through the center and out of this unit there then. And by doing that we should see a voltage actually apply to this guy. If I've got it set right and it will be a lower voltage than I had it set up for. And out of that we had a negative 45 volts, millivolts AC and a positive 47 volts AC, uh, millivolts AC. With that they should pretty much equal each other but that's dependent on how quick I enter it and how fast I pull out of this uh, coil on this. So that's all that this does. We have the magnet and a coil of wire and then we pass a chunk of iron which is in the wheel speed sensor past that to make that happen. I can show you the exact same results then by putting it in a prettier package than just two wires on this. And we'll take a regular crank sensor which has two wires on it which identifies it as an AC signal coming out of it with only two wires coming out of it. If it was three wires it's a 
uh, digital signal. It would be of a Hall effect, and that's a completely <laughs> different concept that would be going on. Yeah. Let me rearrange this unit. And again, two wires. This one does have a permanent magnet built into it with the coil around, wire around the outside, as we've seen before. A couple decimal points on this one. Min max record. And then all I have to do is physically take this guy and move this iron across this unit. And by doing that, you can see we've generated a voltage out of this. And in this case there, we've got four uh, volts AC positive and a negative 12 volts AC on that unit there then. Uh, the amount of time my hand was moving, I was basically going on top of it and leaving it showing the negative, but if I try to do it quickly then, we can alter that around then a small amount on there. So that takes it to this step here then. Now if we go to a wheel speed sensor setup, with that in mind, we can see that we have really and truly the exact same concept going on. They will take this unit, which has a magnet in the end of there, so they take a magnet, wrap it with a very small wire, and you can see that how small this wire is on that, and then mount it with the cord, and most of these do come with the brackets. This manufacturer has made it long enough then that this connector is up alongside the frame up on top out of the water and so on to try and give it some uh, resistance to corrosion and whatnot like that then. Although so a lot of times the problem can happen from just this getting dirty up in there and nothing getting sent to this. So on a wheel speed sensor you can do a couple of things to test. One of those is measure the resistance of the coil. Two, you could actually operate it and see what's the minimum voltage or what AC voltage you have out of that. We'll take a look at that next thing.